And I'm just wondering uh, whether WeWork's failed attempt at an IPO, at least so far, is indicative of overly inflated valuations in some of the private markets. Well, um, first, thanks for having me. Uh, I think that is the, the killer question. You know, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in this is the gift that keeps on giving the Adam Newman show and the, the latest kind of juicy reporting about, you know, what's going on in his behavioral quirks. But, you know, despite the fact that um, WeWork's uh, current whatever they can possibly get out to IPO re represents probably the biggest discrepancy between private and public valuations. There's been a broader trend going on that's been quite disturbing, you know, which has been referred to as blitzscaling, which is, you know, private venture capital investors awash in more capital than we've ever had before are investing unprecedented amounts of capital early in the game in companies with unproven business models. And we're seeing already the consequence of some of those blitz-scaled investments in companies like Uber uh, and, and Lyft and Slack and Cloudera that have uh, gotten billions of dollars of investment but are struggling since they've gone to IPO. So, Len, in an article that you wrote for Wired, you wrote, uh, spending too much too soon on unproven business models only heightens the risk that a company's race for global domination can become a race to oblivion. How does having more money accelerate the chances of failure? Well, the, the, the whole premise behind blitzscaling is that, uh, and SoftBank is probably the, the prime uh, driver of this trend, uh, is that uh, a company like SoftBank can pick a winner early in the game. They haven't, by any stretch of the imagination, proven that they have a viable and profitable and sustainable business model. And by pouring billions of dollars, picking the winner early in the game, that that amount of money alone could be the primary reason why that blessed company can pull away from the pack. And, and the presumption behind that is that capital constraints are uh, a real nuisance. And if we can somehow just remove that nuisance, uh, <clears throat> the chosen winner can come out and run away from the rest of the pack. But I just profoundly think that that's a flawed uh, strategy. So as somebody who has sat atop one of these tech startups, I'm wondering, do you have a sense of how high the overvaluation and how prevalent the overvaluation may be throughout the tech startup world that we're seeing today? Well, I think the, mar the market has already spoken. If you look at uh, companies in the last two years that have gotten a billion dollars or more of private equity investment for, through VCs before they IPO'd, uh, the vast majority, oh, and, and they've now IPO'd either in 2018 or year to date this year, the vast majority of those kind of highly invested in companies, blitz scale invested companies, are now trading under their day one IPO close. So the market is speaking that there is a considerable, depends on, uh, on the valuation. Lyft today, I think, is trading at an all time low, about half of what their day one close was. Uh, but Slack and Uber and several others are suffering by varying amounts anywhere from 5% to 50%. So th there you have it. And just real quick, you think that'll continue, right? That well, as, as long as, as this kind of blitz scale mania uh, takes place, uh, I, I think we'll see more of it.